Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John Coleman and I get to speak with our favorite gourmet, virtual or not, John Mariani. Hey, John. Oh, gracious, good morning. Uh, listen, I uh, know that you are a wine expert. You've got a wonderful palate. I am, uh, I like wine, but I don't have a great palate, but I do have a great wine story with a question. It leads to a question. And this is, I don't know, 30 years ago, the, the boss, the big boss, we were in a restaurant in Columbus, Ohio, of all places. And the big boss, who liked to throw around his weight and his money, told the sommelier, give us your oldest bottle of wine. Yeah. And it cost $100. Now, back then, $100 was a lot of money. Yeah. But we all had it, and it was fabulous. It was like velvet. It was, it was spectacular. I have never, ever had a wine that good since. Mm -hmm. And I've had lots of wine since. But I recognize that old wine, when you, when you have a bottle that was 100 years old and cost $100, it may not be good. Some wine increases and some doesn't. What's, how do you figure that out? It just, is it just luck? Well, it's not luck, um, but it's almost impossible to know. Even the finest connoisseurs who will say, oh, this wine is going to need another 10 years. That's just a guess about a specific wine. Now, if you happen to own a chateau in Bordeaux <clears throat> or Burgundy, and all you do all day is to sample your wines and open wines from years ago, yeah, that's still pretty good. And so on. then, I mean, you know your wines both. Well, then you might say, I think this wine needs uh, some more time. Maybe drink it in five years, because we know these wines. But <clears throat> the central issue here is that the old shibboleth that wines get better with age, like women and all this romantic nonsense, is simply not necessarily, and most of the time, 99% of the time, not true. Certain wines, like Bordeaux and Burgundy at the highest ranks, the Premier Cru, the Grand Cru, and so forth. Yeah, they have a lot of tannin in them, and those, that tannin has to soften up, and that takes years. Now, they soften it up at the winery <clears throat> by letting it sit in the bottle and not um, be released until it is a certain age, usually about three or four years. It just sits down there at the, at the winery, okay? But those are very rare exceptions. Most of the wines in the world, and 99.9% .9 of all white wines, are intended to be drunk as soon as they are released. Now, even a white wine may spend a year or more in the cellars <clears throat> somewhere where it's made, but that would only be like a, a big old Chablis from Burgundy or something like that. The Pinot Grigio that you buy, the Chardonnay from Sonoma <clears throat> Valley that you buy, um, those are released to be drunk right off the shelf and it'll be delicious. I'm talking about white wines now. And for a large proportion of the red wines, because of the way they are made, because of where they are made, because of the, the climate in which they are made or the microclimate, as they say, uh, those wines, when they are released, let's let's say uh, let's say a Cabernet Sauvignon from California, which is going to have tannins in it. OK. So let's say it's uh, the 2024 vintage, which will be next fall, um, is uh, is the grape suppressed, it ferments, it turns into wine, and then they put it into barrels and they let it age for a certain amount of time that they think is the correct amount of time before they put it in the bottle. Then they might age it for another 12 or 18 months, and then they release it. It's ready to drink. Um, you also have to factor in how many of us are willing to wait five, 10 years to drink a bottle of wine. I mean, there are very, very rich, rich connoisseurs. Let me show you my Madeira, my dear, um, uh, who have vast cellars, who will keep these wines around forever, or they'll sell them or something. But that's not us. That's not most people. Um, certain red wines are on the light side, like <clears throat> Beaujolais, um, a uh, whole array of Beaujolais, so that in fact might uh, be intended to be drunk within, excuse me, within the year that it is um, released. So my advice is, 
for the person who loves wine, whether you're a real wine lover or you want to have a bottle of red wine tonight with your steak or pork chops, right. <clears throat> go to the wine store, ask the uh, wine guy there exactly that question. How much, and the guy will say, well, how much do you want to spend and so forth? I said, well, you know, my wife and I have some people over, so I want to, I'll spend $40, $50. I said, okay, here's the wine for you. And now, he's not going to give you a wine that is going to take another 10 years to age. He's going to give you the wine that you want to drink that night, and that's going to be the wine right off the shelves. So even with uh, red wines, uh, you do not have to worry about them. Uh, are you curious that maybe I should let this lie around for a little while and, and, and see if it's going to improve? <clears throat> if you have that wherewithal on time, go right ahead. The thing is that even wines that get the most praise, 97 points out of 100 and so forth. Well, the 1997 Brunello di Montalcino is from mm -hmm. Italy, which are very big red wines, used to be, not so much anymore, um, was praised as just being one of the ex most extraordinary vintages uh, of the century. Well, it didn't come out yeah. onto the market until probably around 2000, 2001. So he said, well, it's ready to drink. Well, let's let's taste it. Some wines, very few, but some wines, big wines, go through what's called a dumb phase. And for no discernible reason, because the wine's still knitting together, it doesn't taste all that good. It tastes flat. You never say this is a great wine. I tasted that wine, and if it was flat, not bad, flat, it was going through the dumb phase. And then three, four years later, the same exact wine, magnificent. Okay, but there's really no way to know that unless you do what I just uh, explained. And most of us just don't have to worry about it, that uh, about the aging of wine. The aging was done at the vineyard, at the, at the wineries. The aging was done in the shipping to the wine store. And they want to move that inventory so that no, no wine store is going to stock a thousand labels of wine, all of which need five to 10 years more of aging to come to their maybe <laughs> fruition. And then the last point is that even the best aged wines, even in really good, we talked about this before, humidified, temperature controlled, you just never know. And I've had I've had 100 year old wines, as you described, John, and they've been remarkable only because they were drinkable. <laughs> yeah. And I remember 1929, Mouton Rothschild at this rich guy's birthday party, he broke it out and I sipped it. It's kind of a little brown. I said, 1929, this is, <laughs> this is astounding that it really has any flavor. 15 minutes later, because oxygen got into it, it just oxidized like that. And it was, it was undrinkable swill. Wow. So that'd be your guide. Yeah. yeah, so good so advice, John. John, I, John, John I have a quick quick question for you for us mere mortals. Um, it's really great that people like yourself, uh, who are experts, actually know because you you you've read enough about it, or you've heard stories about something of this vintage of this year from this uh, winery um, that uh, it, uh, we know that already they've opened enough bottles to know that it's good or it's not good, or what have you. But once you open up, uh, and you just alluded to it. You open up a bottle of wine, just normal, a decent bottle of wine. Uh, at some point, it becomes undrinkable if you don't have it within a certain period of time. Is that the same problem? It becomes oxidized, it's exposed to air for too long? Yeah, yeah exactly. Because, mm -hmm. uh, well, that's the word, oxidized, because of the oxygen that gets in it. Um, right. If you open a bottle of uh, wine, red wine, white wine, you know, there are various corks and stoppers now that... Um, We've certainly got to put a cork back, but uh, two, three days after that, the wine is not going to be as good as when you opened it. Interesting. I want to remind everybody that you can learn more about wines, good food, travel from John Mariani at his website on his newsletter called The Virtual Gourmet at johnmariani.com. And you can also watch John here on Celebrating Act Two. So I hope you like this and subscribe and uh, send John a letter and maybe even a nice bottle of wine he can share with his buddies. <laughs> I haven't gotten a letter in a long time, but I do get a lot of wine. <clears throat> Thank you, John. 
God bless For more you. on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.